up and welcome to the first ever CM design tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you a little bit about shading and value scales. Hopefully by the end of this you'll be able to do something similar to this ball here. Uh, if you look over here to the left of the screen, uh, this these series of shades here that go from dark to light, uh, that's called a value scale. It's all a value scale is. It's just a series of shades that go from dark to light. Uh, you can have a value scale in pretty much any color, I guess. Uh, I mean, if you look over here, we just go from dark to light in this turquoise range, and that would still be a value scale. Uh, just blacks and whites and grays, that's called a gray scale. All right, so let's get started. Uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and have you look at this ball for a second. If you look down here at the bottom on the back, where it's just a little bit lighter, that's called reflected light. Uh, all reflected light is is uh, when light bounces around a room uh, at some point it's going to end up bouncing back onto that ball right here and it's going to help you differentiate between the ball and the shadow uh, first thing that I like to do is just take some random color and draw straight lines kind of representing where your light's going to come from just like so. Now I'm going to clear this layer and I hope you don't mind. I'm going to use stencils to make this a lot quicker and easier. I just inverted the stencil. Just right click and go to invert stencil to do that. Now I usually start with my darkest shade which in this case is just going to be black. When you're shading something, you want to try to stick with the curvature of the ball, or curvature of whatever you're shading. And I'm going to try to leave a little bit right there on the very back of it for that reflected light. I'm going to go up to my next shade. As we get further up the ball, we're going to try to start uh, changing our curvature to give it a little bit more of a 3D look. At this point, I'll usually go ahead and go back up or go and do my lightest shade. The light's probably going to be hitting it the strongest right here. Then I'll just work my way down. Now when we get to about this point, we're about ready to start blending it all in. And with Art Rage, I am not exactly real fond of their blending tool, or palette knife, whatever you want to call it. 
It's kind of a pain to work with sometimes. But I'm going to just use this really harsh uh, setting to really just get my colors blended. And I'll go back and smooth that out with another uh, little bit of a lighter setting. ready to go on up to that better or slightly easier setting. Now let's see we're getting rid of all those little drip driplet spots, whatever you want to call them. I'll go ahead and take the uh, blender and run it all the way back to the uh, stencil there to kind of help me get a little bit more of that reflected light. Now we've got something that looks like a ball. At this point I'm going to go ahead and invert this stencil. Then I'm going to take this one and put against it and try to get it about where I think my shadow is going to come off of it. I'm going to go ahead and start working on my shadow. Shadows are going to be darker and get lighter towards the outside edge, and they will also follow the curvature of your object. Take my palette knife here again. Do the same thing I did a second ago. Then I'm going to take my eraser, make sure it's not got the pressure real high, softness. I uh, have it all the way up and just kind of try to make it a little lighter towards this outside edge. Just to help me blend that a little better. Now let's see what we got. And there you go. You got a basic ball. I hope this helped you guys. I hope you learned something. Uh, please comment, like, and subscribe. Have a great day.